The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. We kick off Tuesday trading. Quite the acceleration yesterday. You had Chairman Powell speaking. You have the S&P rallying to 5820. Pretty remarkable because what he was trying to tell the market was the cuts may not be coming. Uh, but nonetheless, the market accelerates. We're above 5,800. We're negative by three points on the session right now. But boy, you traded up 60 points from the lows of about 2.30 yesterday afternoon to 5,820. And we've just been chopping around at that price level since that period of time. NASDAQ 100, quite the acceleration as well. You trade up almost 250, 300 points. You trade from 220,000. And 50 almost, and we're sitting right now 20,274. Dow in negative territory this morning, off by 112 points. That's about a quarter percent in the red right now. And you got the Russell, negative by four. Bitcoin, 67,000 on Friday, 63,000 today. You're, you're positive by $115 right now, but Bitcoin chopping around. Crude, how about that acceleration this morning, right? 66.33. It's not stopping, man. Lower lows and lower highs coming at you in this market. We're challenging now the lows of early September. We're back down there. We're trading at 67.31. As I mentioned, you made it to 66.33, almost a dollar lower. You're a dollar. You're almost a dollar lower on the session right now, trading at 67.30. You jump over to that gold contract. Gold back to a 15-minute chart. Gold with some volatility yesterday as well. You trade down to 1646, and we've taken off a little bit, getting back some of those losses. We're positive by $12 on the session right now. We're trading at 2671, the price of gold. And you jump to notes and bonds to see the move yesterday. And there was the first move, right? There it was. Lower price, higher yield. You get it back, though, in the overnight session. And we're right back to where we were at the beginning of trading yesterday. We're trading right now at 114.21. In your 10-year, and that's putting you at a yield of about 3.74%. 3.74 on the 10-year. You jump over the dollar index, DXY. 101 is the handle there. You see the acceleration. So what happened, right? Well, we got a little bit of higher yield. You got dollar strength. That's continuing overnight. We have dollar strength above 101.15 right now. You take a look at the daily. And yes, we got a little bit of a bounce, but all things considered, we're still sitting right at this area of about 100 to 101, chopping around. We're above 101 today at 101.16. And yeah, all things considered, gold holding up pretty well. When you got so much dollar strength there, we're at 101 in the dollar, and we're sitting at 26.70 in the gold contract. All right, we talked about it yesterday, and the port strike is happening. We're here. Let me pull it up. Where are we? Excuse me. Here we go. So, we're talking about, come on, where's my headline? Dock workers launch strike at ports from Maine to Texas and checking out the map, okay? Well, let's check out the map first and then we'll get into some of the details. There's your map for you, okay? And this TEU, so this chart here, map, graphic, this is the volume of loaded import and export containers for the year 2022. The large circle size here, like New York, is at about 5 million TEUs. TEU stands for 20-foot equivalent units. Okay, so you're talking about those huge types of units that they're putting on these ships, uh, shipping containers, basically. The smaller circle here is a million. Tampa and Boston, for some reason, they don't have the data for the volumes, okay? Comparable volume data for the ports of Boston and Tampa, not available. So not sure where they fall, but they're in there. But, yeah, you're talking about some numbers, man. We talked about it yesterday. You're talking about potentially $4 billion a day is what they're talking about, the hit to GDP out there. In terms of the numbers, what they're talking about, you have the workers looking for potentially a 77% wage increase over six years. And what happens here, folks, is you hear these numbers, right? You say, oh, my goodness, 77% wage. But I don't know when the last time they got a wage increase was. If you haven't gotten a wage increase in the last five or seven years, you've basically received a wage cut to the tune of 25 to 35 percent is what's happened to your salary. If you've not received a wage increase, you are now living with basically a pay cut 
for all intents and purposes, real life applications, 25 to 35% from where you were four or five years ago to where you are right now. So then you go six years into the future, okay, even if you're talking about two to three percent inflation, six years out compounded is still another 20%. See how that goes, right? You grow at 3% in terms of inflation for six years, 20% is what the number is. Okay, you compound it, you add it, it's 18 plus some compounding. Yeah, it is big numbers. So when you're talking about, now they wanted 77% in terms of what they're talking about in this article, they mentioned here, where was it that they talked about? Yeah, so originally they got offered a 40% increase. Employers raised that to a 50% increase over the six years, along with other improvements in benefits devil's in the details usually uh, in the 24 hours before the strike deadline. So nonetheless, they are on strike and you're talking about 45,000 workers and yeah, we're probably going to see it happen in Tampa. You know, if you're right near one of these ports, especially uh, depending on, you know, anyway, speaks for itself. A lot of products, a lot of goods, a lot of, you know, 5 million on the big circles, 1 million on the small circles. You add them up, that's a lot of millions of containers that are coming into the country every single year. And uh, every day it's going to begin to add up. And you're going to start hearing about this more and more as it goes forward. A strike lasting even one week would tie up ships for much longer periods, which could exacerbate shipping delays, eat up capacity, and drive up freight rates. Some industry, yeah, this is not an industry that you can just push a button, you know? The potential for a strike has not impacted us in terms of delivery. That's an apparel brand that makes socks and underwear and imports mostly through West Coast ports. But what it has impacted is the cost, because obviously rates are going up because of the situation. Yeah. All right. That's a perfect segue to Chairman Powell, because what's he talking about? He's talking about disinflation. Yeah. So Powell says the Fed is not in a hurry. will lower rates over time. Fed chair repeats interest rate policy not on a preset path. I mean, you could just run that recording 24 hours a day for Powell. Recent price figures point to dis to continued disinflation is what he's talking about. OK, looking forward, if the economy evolves broadly as expected, policy will move over time toward a more neutral stance, but we are not on a preset course, he said, noting that policymakers would continue to make decisions on a meeting-by-meeting -meeting based on incoming data. They're data-dependent, folks. Surprise, surprise, right? This is not a committee that feels like it's in a hurry to cut rates quickly. Ultimately, we will be guided by the incoming data, and if the economy slows more than we expect, then we can cut faster. If it slows less, then we can cut slower. Well, why do they have to go by 50 then? Right? That's the kicker in all of this. If things are so up in the air and things are so good, why do they have to go 50? That's what the market is reading into, just so you know. And I keep going over how much this market is pricing in rates, right? I go over the FedWatch tool. I say, my goodness, if you've been watching the program, I'm going to do it again after the next break. We're going to take a look at it because now you have BlackRock out there saying the same thing. Yeah, you got Fink. He says, okay, we're going to talk about this after the break, okay? The amount of easing that's in the forward curve is crazy. We'll put it there. I don't feel so crazy talking about it now because it is a little crazy. Yeah. And you know what, though? You know why it's in there? Part of the reason why it's in there is because they went 50, right? It was in there before they went 50. But there's something going on. The, 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 the money doesn't lie, as they say. They went 50. The market said they were going to go 50. So keep those spikes up. We'll talk about that when we get back. S&P's off by three. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Lots to talk about. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week, exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. You have markets rolling over a bit. S&P's now in negative territory by six points right now. And getting back to that port strike. So one anecdotal piece, but boy, it's going to reverberate quickly, which is why I'm not harping on it. But it's today. Today's the day it starts. And when you look at how this can impact things so quickly, right? So you have one Florida-based importer, okay, Square One Farms, a Sunrise Florida-based importer. This is from the article in the journal we were talking about. They sell asparagus to supermarkets such as Walmart, Kroger, and Wegmans. They now have to fly in vegetables that would usually arrive by container ship, 50 cents a pound to the prices he charges to stores to cover higher air freight costs. So Walmart, Kroger, and Wegmans are going to be charging, are going to be paying 50 cents a pound more for asparagus on their end. Are they going to eat those costs? That's a problem in margins. Are they going to pass it off to you? That's a problem for Chairman Powell and the economy. Um, yeah, either supermarkets elect to absorb that cost or they will pass it on. That's how it goes, man. And the costs are going to be there. And every day they're going to go up. Now, people were planning for this, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, we jump around. Gold. Let's talk a little gold. So I sent out an update to my subscribers yesterday in Rocket. And, you know, this is an interesting one when you take a look at where we are in gold right now. And I just wanted to show you a couple A to B, C to Ds that have actually completed where we are right now. Now, what's intriguing is, okay. Yeah, let me back this up for a second. What we have is we have three different one-to-one -one A to B, C to D projections that have completed that have completed right at it. We might be at a consolidation here between 27 and 2800. All right, maybe 2750. 
doesn't mean you can't plow higher. But it is remarkable that on multiple time frames here, we're talking about an A to B C to D completion, okay? Let's go shorter time frame first. All right, we're going to delete this one. This is our intermediate one, all right? So before we do it, this is our intermediate. And this tool on Thinkorswim is a basically projection expansion tool, right? And what you can see is from about the beginning of 2016 to the run-up it had to 2100 almost, 2089, you pull back and you do an exact one-to-one -one move. You complete that move at about 2,700. Okay, that's going back to 2016. We'll take that one off our chart. We'll put it back to a daily and go shorter term. Shorter term, all right, it's at about here where that run-up begins. And, you know, where do you... Oh, wait, that's not the tool, excuse me. Let's start at about here. All right, and it's going to be this tool right here, the Fibonacci Extension. Not the Fibonacci retracement, which I use often. The Fibonacci extension tool, if you're using Think or Swim. All right. And that's probably, I mean, it makes the run fairly quickly, right? From March 1st up to April 12th. Boom. Just like that, you're trading at 2450. You consolidate for a while. And you pull back. And where do you start that one? Okay. Let's say you just start it right here. The run up. And this is the only one on a shorter term time frame. All right, there's about 27.50 would be to one to one. But you can see, so on a shorter term time frame, right, we're almost at a one to one completion. That completion would be at about 27.50. We make it to 27.08. Now that's on the shorter term. I showed you that if you take from 2016 up to the highs we had here, and you pull it back to the run that began in late 2022. And let's take that shorter term time frame off for some clarity. We're right there, right? 2662. I mean, they don't line up to the penny, but folks, we're talking about a daily one-to-one -one expansion going back to February. We're talking about an intermediate one-to-one -one expansion going back to 2016 that has just completed. And all of these have pretty reasonable defined pullbacks, right? An area of a defined pullback. You get a first move higher, you get a pullback, and you get a second move higher that is a one-to-one -one expansion of the first move, right? And then the kicker of them all is, we'll take that one off, is where do you think we're going? We're going right back to the year 2000. I might call name Brian. Uh, to the run we had. And it's so funny in terms of where you can pick this thing off, right? About 2001. You take the Fibonacci extension tool, you line it up to the highs of 2011, you back it off to the lows of 2015, and where do we line up to? Like exactly where we spiked to, literally to the tick. Yeah, this line lines up at about 2,700, and I'm ballparking. I mean, let's zoom in here. Where do we pick? Yeah, I guess we could line that up a little bit higher, right? You know, where exactly has that been? Maybe right there, right? All things considered, folks, pretty remarkable. And I'm not cherry-picking trends here, okay? That's the easily definable run-up in the 2000s. You pull back, and the second run. It matches it exactly, okay? Then you get the intermediate run, which is the run from 2016 up to the highs of 2020. And then we pull back, and you match it again. And then what do we got on the daily? We got a run-up from the lows of February, up to this consolidation area and you make the run again. The only one that doesn't line up that has a little room left is on the shorter term basis. You could trade a little bit higher. Now listen, I still have gold in my portfolio, okay? You should too. If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, absolutely great time to do it. Go sign up for my dad's gold report out there. Okay, it comes with a 30-day money back guarantee because we got a lot of volatility. You heard Chairman Powell yesterday, right? He's making the case. It's not happening just yet. We're going to find out, man, but gold is going to react to it, and I think you just might get a little digestion here. Yeah, it's going to matter with the dollar, that's for sure, but, you know, part of where this lines up as well is what's so interesting, I was talking about it yesterday and days before is, you know, don't think that if the dollar pulls back a bit, that gold has to trade higher. Gold has already traded higher on a dollar that's right where it was at the same area from 2023. But 
How about that, right? Three different time frames you're talking about match up exactly to the 2700 to 2750 area on a daily basis. For 2024, that matches up. Going back about 10 years to the run we had that began in 2016, that matches up. And then the longest of long term, we got a one-to-one -one expansion. And how about that, right? Now, what's even cooler is, how about this? If you want to see what kind of retracements those are how about like exactly to the 50 percent right exactly that first move you trade up you pull back 50 percent and then what happens well it takes about eight years but you get another move to the tune of 1600 bucks to 2600 big moves in that gold contract to say the least all right, folks, stay tuned. We do have a lot to talk about. We're going to finish up that conversation talking about the yield curve because, yeah, Mr. Fink of BlackRock, he says um, they're getting a little ahead of themselves, this market. Market's gotten ahead of itself before. We're going to talk some yields. We'll talk some Fed. We'll talk some basis points. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P negative by seven. NASDAQ 100 sneaks into the positive. Speaking of A to B, C to D completions, you're looking at the S&P. We've talked about these a while back. And the NASDAQ 100 has already completed its A to B, C to D from the COVID lows to the highs that we had at the beginning of 2022. The S&Ps, you could make up another 300 bucks. 
Yeah. And uh, trade up from 2174 to 4808, back to 3502. And you're talking about 6136 would be that completion in the NASDAQ 100. That area, let me zoom in a little. That area, 20,623. You actually got above that in July. So maybe the S&P just catching up a little bit. NASDAQ 100 completing that A to B CDD formation. Gold completing it on three different time frames. The S&P about 300 points from that price level. The Dow, a little bit of a different story. You take the bottom of the Dow, you're talking about about 18,000, give or take. You rise up to a price level of about 37,000. So you're talking about 19,000 or so would be the A to B leg. And 19,000 off of 28, that's going to push you to what, 47,000, something like that. So you got about 5,000, 4 to 5,000 on the Dow to really get that A to B, C to D. But nonetheless, the S&P is right at that level. All right, let's jump around to some of the Magnificent 7, see how we're trading right now to kick off the session. We jump over to Apple shares. Ooh, watch out for Apple. First day of October, and you give it back, down by 2%. What's going on with Apple? Not sure. Might just be the market. Let's see. Barclays is saying cautious. Cautious comments is how they put it. Yeah, no real headline over there. But it seems like I saw one. All right. Yeah, trying to search for it. If everybody knows why Apple's dipping a little bit lower, but hey, just could be the market. Look at this thing, man. 2.2%. All right, market's selling off right now. Apple off by 2.3%. We'll jump around. Microsoft shares off by half a percent. Amazon shares off by eight tenths percent. You jump over to NVIDIA. Can't hold NVIDIA down. I kid somewhat, but NVIDIA in the positive right now as markets sell off a bit, trading at 122. Check in on the chips. AMD flat right now. Intel shares in the positive by about three tenths percent. So yeah, talking about the yield curve. So, Larry Fink said the market is pricing in too many interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve given the U.S. economy continues to grow. I don't see any landing, is how he puts it. Okay, this is an interview today, um, Berlin Global Dialogue 2024 conference. So over in Berlin, the amount of easing that's in the forward curve is crazy. I do believe there's room for easing more but not as much of the, as the forward curve would indicate. We've been talking about this. Money markets imply a one in three chance the Fed will deliver another half point cut in November. This is why I like watching the Fed watch tool, folks, okay? You don't have to be a genius to go, yeah, there's your one in three, right? Right there, boom. 37% chance the Fed cuts by 50 basis points in November. 63% chance the market is pricing in, they go 25 basis points. No other possibilities in the market. You think they're going to stay? No. The market says they're not going to stay. There's a 63% chance they cut by 25, and the only other possibility is they cut by 50. Okay? That's for November. We've been focusing on the June meeting. I like focusing on the June meeting because that's basically the peak cut right now over the next six months that's when you get to the area that the highest percentage range is in the three to three point two five range which brings us down 1.75 percentage points from where we are right now now they make the case that they state in this article that by the end of the year okay money markets imply a one in three chance the fed's going to deliver that half point cut in november which i just showed you and price a total of about a 190 basis points of easing by the end of next year. I like looking at June because the market's ahead of the, the end of next year. Let me pull that, sorry. Right? Yeah, we can go out to December, all right? But just look where this is in June right now, okay? June, three to three and a quarter is the high end. Now, this has shifted a bit, though. Look at a week ago where we were, right? A week ago, this area here, which was two full percentage points of cuts, had as high as almost a 30% probability. That's been halved. It's now 16. What does that mean? Well, that means the market has pulled back a bit on the expectation for cuts. All right, I think this is going to continue. I think that's going to be the case. But nonetheless, this is June, and you see three to three and a quarter percent is the highest probability region. You go to July. Still the highest probability region, three to three and a quarter. Okay, you go to September. Let's see how far out you have to go for it to change. Still the highest probability region, three to three and a quarter by September. You go to October. Let me zoom out so they can just click it. Still 
the highest region, three to three and a quarter. Now, as you can see, as these percentages are growing on the left side once we go out, you go to December, finally you get where maybe you're going to get to 275 to three. But as you can see, all right, you go back to May, and the biggest region is 3.25 to 3.5. But any time after, for June, July, September, and October right now, all four of those meetings, the market thinks the highest probability chance of each of those meetings is three to three and a quarter, and you get there by June. Okay? You add up just by June, you add up these two right here, that is a 65% chance about, folks. 65.1 to be exact, okay? 65.1. That's a two-to-one probability by the time we get to June you're either going to see 1.5% or 1.75% to cuts over the next six meetings. Folks, that's going 25 for six straight meetings or putting 50 in there somewhere and 25 for the rest. Okay, so when they say it's factoring in 1.9 percentage points of cuts by the end of next year, I like going to June, right? Focus on where they are by June, because if we get a recalibration by June, that's only six meetings, man. We know how time flies, right? Remarkable in terms of how fast time flies sometimes. But yeah, um, Fink expects the U.S. economy to grow at 2 to 3 percent annually. <coughs> Excuse me. There are segments of the economy that are doing really well. We spend so much time focusing on those that are doing poorly. Um, and those are the cuts. And as you can see, right, June, things level out a bit. It's an acceleration right into June. You couldn't make the case July, September, and then we teeter out. But no, June, 1.64 is where we are when you factor it in. They get to 1.9 by the end of the year. 1.64 is where we are by June. 1.75 by July. 1.83 by September. It is big numbers, man. Especially when you see Chairman Powell coming out making the talks he is. Now what do we got? We got a port strike. I just showed you. Who's buying asparaguses? They're going up 50, 50 cents a pound. There's a lot of variables, right? Jeez, we got, I mean, the headlines in terms of geopolitical risk. I don't talk about them much because, you know, it's a sad deal. War is a sad deal. People are dying left and right. And um, we're all aware of it. But on the front page of every news organization I bring up, Bloomberg, Journal, CNBC, it's all talking about Israel, Lebanon, Hezbollah, right, Iran. You have risks in this market right now in terms of where we are, instability, and then you have a port strike, which is just remarkable in terms of the impact that it's going to have, folks. All right? These are real containers with real products that go to real stores that you use. This is not some theoretical, you know, exercise. These are real products. These are real shipping containers. They're ports all over the country, and if they don't get a resolved sometime soon those prices are going to go up and that's going to be a thorn in the feds the fed side so we'll see price control right all right folks stay tuned we'll come back we got s&p's rolling over negative by 42 points now watch out baby your financial SMPs future tfnn is your gateway to the world of trading and investing whether you're starting out or scaling up tfnn empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems strategies and techniques it's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got Apple. This is quite a move when you talk about market cap wise, especially Apple down six dollars and fifty cents off two point eight percent. Check out the action for yesterday. Right. We're almost. Yeah, you are now below where you were on Friday. I was going to say you get quite the acceleration. You close out Friday about two twenty seven. You make it up to 233 in the aftermarket last night and you give it up within the first 15 minutes of trading Nasdaq 100 off 176 testing the lows of yesterday afternoon right at 20,086 right now we're going to take a look at Tesla real quick so Tesla we had a question on Tesla justifiably man you know hey traders love volatility the one thing that Tesla has is volatility in both directions okay Tesla right now down with the market down about nine tenths percent but that's just with the market you get a little bit of a pullback you had some volatility yesterday Tesla right now down two dollars and 38 cents at about 260 dollars so you get the robo taxi event coming down the line October 10th okay that is a week from Thursday robo taxi event I personally would not be holding this equity through that event Okay, you're going to get a lot of hoopla. And yes, there is a very real chance this thing trades higher. Okay, as we all know, but it's not trading off fundamentals right now. And that's the dicey part. Okay, going into an event like that. And what I wanted to highlight is just a couple of quick areas of how this robo taxi has taken shape. Okay, in terms of where they've come from and where it's been. Now, news first comes, okay, timing wise, there's the tweet. It's still up there. 48 million views. Surprised it's that small. I guess he probably stopped uh, making that available for views once he changed the date. But nonetheless, April 4, April 5th of this year, he comes out, says Robo Taxi unveil on 8 8. Okay, April 5th. Remember that date. April 5th, right? How is Tesla doing on April 5th when their CEO comes out and promises the world to its investors? How is it doing? Oh, it was in the midst of a day. There is April 5th on the charts where you were pushing $160, okay? And look where this chart had been. You were just trading in the beginning of the year at $260, okay? So fast forward to April, right? Where are we? April 5th. There we are. We're coming back down to test the 160 line. Elon comes out. They come out with their earnings. They have a lot of hoopla about robo-taxis, right? The robo-taxi event. It's taking place on when? 8-8. Well, wait a second. It's ten one. Well, yes, it got pushed back. Okay, it got pushed back. He overpromised and underdelivered. I know that's surprising, folks. I know it is. Okay, and then you get the story. July fifteenth comes out that they're going to delay it. Well, how did the stock do from April fifth to July fifteenth? How did it do? How do you think it did? It did phenomenal, folks. It traded up a hundred dollars. There is April fifth at about one sixty. And July 15th is at the highs here. Yeah, 260. 
So you gained a hundred dollars. You had this complete run up here, okay, of of inordinate exuberance. They delay that event. You go through an earnings that's abysmal. The stock drives back down to 180, and just like that, we're testing those highs again, which is where Elon decided to say Robotax the event not coming down. I don't think he's going to cancel the event on October 10th. Okay, it's at Warner Brothers Studios. They got a big hoopla going. But keep in mind, you're talking about, folks, a company with 3 billion plus shares outstanding. Yeah, almost 3.2 billion shares outstanding. Just traded up $100, which means it added $320 billion of market cap since they made that announcement of RoboTaxis coming later this year from where that price was. 300 plus billion in market cap. Expectations are going to be high. And there is a huge trust factor going forward here okay elon is quite a figure um people are going to need to trust the cars that they get in when they're going to be self-driving and yes elon is going to have plenty of people that do trust him but is he going to have the masses okay just keep it in mind man whether you're a fanboy or not all right and there's no hate at all everyone you know there's this deal here where Elon has taken on this meteoric rise of euphoria where if you question anything he does, you're a hater. Folks, I'm not getting into a Tesla robotaxi, okay? And I got no problem with self-driving cars in the future when they reach a point, but I can't trust anything coming out of this car company at all. Can't trust it. And you're going to have to be trust trusting when it comes to getting into a car that's controlled by a computer. It's a huge leap that we're going to have to make as a society and I just don't see how it's going to come down the line. Yeah. But the point being, look at the chart. Okay, where are you? You're at a triple top here. Yes, you can break above it. But boy, from when they announced that, right, look where they were. He is he is one of the best promoters in the world. Okay. And I'm surprised more wealthy people, like uber wealthy, for lack of a better word, um, don't do what he did. He didn't lose any money, man. He didn't lose any money buying Twitter. All he did is he took some of the money he had in Tesla and then decided to control the biggest bully pulpit in the world. He calls it free speech. We don't need to get into politics, all right? But I'm surprised more people don't spend that wealth once you're at that echelon to control every type of messaging you can. And that's what he's doing. And he's using it. And you see what he can do um, when you're talking about this stock, folks, has traded higher this year on nothing but messaging. Okay, and you wonder why he spent tens of billions of dollars to buy Twitter from, to control the messaging. Nothing but messaging. There is April 5th. Keep it in mind, when he told the world robo-taxis were coming in August, he waited until July to delay that event. He said, yeah, we're trading at 260. We can push things back a little bit. We got a little bit more room right now. We're coming down the line October. You know, you can only burn things so many times. He's been talking about self-driving fleets of cars for basically a decade now. And I wouldn't be wanting to hold that bag with this type of a run-up to that event going on on October 10th. Yeah, there's your Tesla roundup for you. All right, what else we got? This one's an interesting one from the journal. Hopefully, if you were out there buying CDs, that you were able to buy the non-callable ones. What a bummer, right? It's, it's such a bummer, folks, in terms of education that, you know, we put people through education. We need financial literacy, and we need civics. Both of those are abysmal in terms of what we get done on the education level okay this is a very simple example right it happens all the time all these people they get locked into variable mortgage rates right when rates all these things that happen it's unfortunately a lack of financial literacy that goes on to it civics is a whole other deal um but yeah you have a bunch of people now who are finding out that they bought guess what callable cds yeah and they're getting them called and now what are you going to do with that money well you better figure it out man uh, most cds are not callable but the ones that are typically offer the highest rates yeah are going to be callable um but they talk about where we are cds and other deposits sold through the brokerages yeah, brokered CDs were a big one, man. Savers poured more than $650 billion into brokered CDs since rates started rising in 2022. The amount of brokered deposits in the banking system more than doubled over the past two years. Yeah, pretty amazing. When banks sell CDs through brokers, they can change the interest rates on large amounts of deposits without dealing with individual customers. Yeah, brokered CDs are a little bit different. You can still make sure they're non-callable, okay? And if you're talking about where we are in rates right now, 
This is a quick glimpse for callable CDs. And these are, excuse me, non-callable. These numbers here are non-callable. Okay, so you're talking about a five-year ladder, 3.64%. You push it out to five years, 3.5. At least they're non-callable. We'll finish this conversation up among with some others. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps, negative by 50 right now. NASDAQ 100, 256, Dow 243, and the Russell down by 31. Russell, 1.4% right now. NASDAQ, one and a quarter percent. You jump over to some of the currencies. you got the dollar spiking higher to 101.17. You check out the gold contract spiking to 26.92. And the news reports out there that the U.S. saying Iran preparing to attack Israel with ballistic missiles. And, yeah, the U.S. has indications that Iran... In yeah, indications that Iran is preparing to imminently launch a ballistic missile attack against Israel. Not good, man. The warning comes as Israeli forces moved into southern Lebanon in an escalation of its campaign against Tehran Bakht Hezbollah. Troops began what Israel said were targeted ground raids shortly before midnight local time alongside airstrikes in Beirut's southern suburbs. And the army later reported intense fighting. Nonetheless, things ratcheting up in the market, reacting, trading a little bit lower, gold spiking to highs. S&P is not stopping, man. Down 54 points. The day is young, folks, as they say. Right. Uh, going back to those CDs real quick. So, yes, this is a quick glimpse, okay? The ladder rates you see here, when they have ladders and you're building ladders in a brokered CD, usually these are non-callable. 
Okay, so you're locking in the rates. And that's why if you go down to the new issues, CDs by top rates, you can see if you go down to the five, you say, oh, we can get 4.2%. That's great. New issues by new issue CDs by top rates. I love 4.2. Why would somebody build a five-year ladder with 3.5 for the five-year of their leg? Why wouldn't they go to? Well, the reason why, folks, is because this 4.2 is callable. The 3.5 is non-callable. Okay, if you're looking for a CD, you think you're going to lock it in, make sure you get a non-callable. And yeah, because that's unfortunate for many people out there that got locked in. And um yeah, this article's talking about it is a big problem going forward right now because um, a lot of people are getting them called. And the only thing I'll say is not the end of the world right now. Get it locked in if you can because I just showed you that a five-year is still pushing 3.6%, folks. If the Fed drops rates two full percentage points over the next year, that number's not going to be 3.6. We will see. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. I got everyone fired up about uh, X and Elon. And Washington Post, a great example, Bezos. Bezos ain't running the post like Elon's running X, though. I don't think that's quite the same deal. Folks, thanks so much for the conversation. Joining me, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's in that Tiger's Den right now. He's coming up with the Tiger Technician's Hour. Go check out that opening call. We'll see you tomorrow.